Hey, I'm Charting Man Dan with The Chart Guys, trader and technical analyst for the last 13 years. In this video, we're going to check in on the earnings reactions after hours to Google and Microsoft. We'll see how that's impacting the rest of the tech sector. I'll talk about a bearish bet I made in the financial sector today, and we'll check in on all our subsectors. So first, we got our earnings reactions. Keeping in mind, we haven't had the conference calls yet, and that can change things. But Google here is a bullish reaction and currently up at 130 which means we are breaking resistance and testing actually over the recent high. So that was a big save for the bulls because we were close, closer than any other major tech name to confirming a weekly downtrend, which obviously would have been a significant shift. But here we are holding weekly EMA 12 again and again and heading up to higher highs. So Google bulls with the reaction so far, unless the conference call significantly changes that. Microsoft had a bearish reaction and dropped pretty notably, but is right back up testing where we closed. And you can see the low of the day, 345. We're trading at 349. So not really anything going on on the earnings reaction. And so the big key, and this goes for Microsoft as well as a ton of other individual daily charts. The next couple of days, FOMC tomorrow at 2 p.m. And we've got meta earnings tomorrow as well. I believe it's meta. Yep. So the key is, do we confirm daily downtrends or do we see 50% plus bounce retracement to keep the bulls in control? That's the question. And you look at QQQ and it's the same question. Do we set a daily lower high and confirm the first daily downtrend in three months or is this just a higher low right back up to new 52 week highs? We have a bullish reaction in QQQ after hours, testing the high of the day. But that's it. That is the most important thing right now in the entire market. Forget FOMC. It's do we set NASDAQ lower highs and lower lows. And there are some names today that have weak bounces underway and are potentially daily bear flags. So if QQQ were to break the low of today tomorrow, that would be a big win for the bears because that would shape up a daily downtrend. So remains to be seen. The burden is on bears, but that's what we're watching. The S&P 500 is still all bulls. New 52-week highs today. Not by much, but again, just stick with the daily uptrend. When's the last time SPY lost the daily higher low pattern? The answer is it hasn't happened in a very long time. We're going back. I mean, even that was a double bottom, but we'll say it's now been over three months, just about three months. So the simple statement is the SPY bulls have complete control if 451.44 is support. That can be our new benchmark level. And we know the NASDAQ pulled back more, so there's the possibility of confirming a daily downtrend, but only if we set that daily lower high sometime in the next day or two. And just other names that have this same setup, we'll talk about some of them more in depth, but NVDA, are we setting a daily lower high? PLTR, the AI name, are we setting a daily lower high? Netflix, Tesla, are we setting daily lower highs? If yes, downtrends are on the table. So tomorrow's a pretty important day, of course, with the FOMC reaction. Chinese names had followed through on the open from yesterday's strength. Gap up open into significant pullback. We know gap ups are not for buying, especially after going 5% the previous day. So now the bulls have to be cautious of a rising wedge on something like BABA because we break resistance into a pullback, break resistance into a pullback. And what I need to see is KWeb 3017. That's not a convincing break of resistance. So weekly resistance still in play on KWeb. FXI is another ETF. Didn't break 29.25. So still work to be done. Again, no major red flags after, if you go two days, you know, the entire ETF here on FXI in two days was up over 6%. A pullback is definitely to be expected. NIO, a little bit of a climax kind of candle with a big push up on the morning. Again, remember the lesson from PLTR. When you're all bull and you push up fast and hard and then you hit a new low of the day, giving it all back, that's generally a climax top. PLTR did it back here. Let's now see if NIO sees a couple of pullback days. We will be looking for a daily higher low. We will be watching hourly oversold, but it is 
a climax kind of move when you get that kind of push up and then complete reversal back down. XPEV, also seeing a big pullback today. One of my failed trades today. And you can see again, solid pullback, solid close at the low. The failed trade I had, one of them today was XPEV, trying for this double bottom base of support. So made an entry at, I think it was 1556 is where I got filled, playing off the double bottom at 1552, sold partial into the move up to 1572, quick little 1% move, and then stopped out. Pretty much break even, tiny loss. And then the bounce never got going. Bears just kept control from there. Tesla, gap up open similar to the Chinese names into all profit taking. We knew yesterday we did not confirm an hourly uptrend yet, so we knew hourly consolidation would be inevitable, and we did confirm an hourly downtrend with a lower high and lower low into the end of the day. So the big question, is this our daily lower high being set? Do we confirm a daily downtrend from here? I was looking short Netflix today because it broke Resistance with zero follow-through. Netflix is a potential daily bear flag right now. FOMC is going to determine things, but if it's a bearish reaction to the FOMC, there are daily bear flags on the table, and there are potential daily downtrends shaping up in some of these names. The plays I made on Netflix today was just top fishing. 15-minute equilibrium, anticipating a lower high. So got a short there. Pretty much a double bottom. But made another little short there, top fishing resistance. And I wanted to swing it, but didn't get a weak enough close to swing anything. So just a couple little day trades playing off of 430 resistance into quick little pullbacks. And one more trade. I had a Tesla, a good Tesla bounce. Tesla, I knew I was looking for an hourly higher low to be the result of morning consolidation. I was watching this double bottom on the one minute. I was on the one minute time frame and we had this bounce and a pullback, and then we double bottomed and held this low. And I don't have my orders up right now, but I got a real good fill. I got a fill in the 265s. So as soon as, right, right when we came down to that support, made an entry, would have put my stop under 265, sold partial into the move up, sold the rest into 15 minute EMA 12 resistance. Missed a little bit of upside, sold there, but nothing notable today, just a nice little green day. Kept the losers small, no major winners, but that's the way it goes. SMH, are we shaping up a daily lower high? There's no indication of it right now. Hourly uptrend is our guide. We have to lose the hourly uptrend and then confirm an hourly downtrend if daily lower highs are going to shape up for potential downtrends. And again, retracement size. So SMH is a pretty solid bounce retracement. It's over 50% at this point. You compare SMH to Netflix, Netflix is a way weaker bounce. The probabilities of a daily downtrend confirming on Netflix are notably higher than on SMH. This is how I determine what am I going to be looking at? Which names do I want to be looking short? Which names do I want to be looking long? I don't want to be looking short the names that have bounced much more significantly. I want the names that are struggling to bounce. So I am watching Netflix for a daily lower high to be set sooner rather than later. Financial sector. So bear trade I made today, again, same mindset. I'm watching for the NASDAQ to bounce in the short term. We finally got it today. And then it was, all right, inverse relationship with our other sectors. Does a bounce in the NASDAQ mean daily consolidation in the financial sector? So I watched the morning play out. And then once we hit the new low of the day, I entered FAZ, which is the bearish ETF. And took partial profit right at the low of the day because the five minute and the 15 minute RSI were both at 20. And then didn't know if I was going to swing it, but at the end of the day, we had some bearish reaction to PACW regional bank uh, news that it might get bought out. And so that was a weak enough close on XLF to convince me to give a swing to swing the remaining position. I've got some profit cushion and it's an inside bar and a weak close. So if we break the low of today tomorrow, daily consolidation is underway and my target will be hourly oversold conditions. But after hours, We've got bullish reactions going on in the market, so I'm not sure if that's going to stick or not. But bulls are liking what's going on after hours overall. PACW still hasn't reacted to earnings, but regional banks bouncing with the financial sector. 
We'll see. If we break the inside bar bull, I will stop out, pretty much giving back my day trade gains for today on FAZ. Healthcare had a gap down open, but bulls bought that dip. So healthy daily consolidation at this point. Bulls would need to regain an hourly uptrend if the daily higher low is going to be set. So no red flags there. IWM still sideways. Inside bar, inside bar pretty much. Still extremely healthy daily consolidation overall, but range bound. Expecting volatility in IWM tomorrow, certainly with the FOMC reaction. Solar sector, I'm on the verge of being stopped out. My stop right now is at, again, the swing entry was during a live stream, somewhere around there on this big green candle day. Started to recognize the red flags and the potential megaphone and did take did take some profit on the big green day because of the size of the move up. But I've got my stop now under 70 psychological. Wanted to give a little bit of wiggle room under that recent low of 70.38, extra 38 cents, no big deal. And so potential head and shoulders here. And there's been enough red flags that I'm assuming I'm going to stop out of this position. And it will be a tiny red or pretty much break even. Again, just selling partial into the move that's in your favor just makes you so much more comfortable in trades. I highly suggest it. If you're struggling, something to play around with. Other than that, KRE. So I'm still waiting for a stop level to move my swing trade up. No daily high or low being established. And ARKK, I did move my stop up. And I am going to use uh, a level under the low of yesterday just because we broke the high of yesterday by a few pennies with no follow through. And there is still weakness in growth names. AI bulls showing up, tightening daily range again. So watching to see if AI is able to salvage this current setup. And PLTR, again, I'm scouting PLTR for a daily lower high. A lot of space for it to form. So my major watches personally for daily lower highs are Netflix and PLTR. And I know the NASDAQ would have to see weakness if those names are going to follow through into confirmed daily downtrends. The dollar... So four-hour uptrend still in play, but it's shaping up like we may be due for some daily consolidation here. And so with that, the metals trying to get their bounce going. Gold kept breaking support with no follow-through, started to get like a falling wedge here. We had a, a bear break into a bounce, bear break into a big bounce. And so daily higher low trying to form. Have to be cautious of the head and shoulders. Silver. Also trying to bounce off daily EMA 12. So again, need to see the dollar now confirm a four-hour downtrend. Next bounce, whenever that is, have to confirm the four-hour downtrend if these metal bulls are going to get bounce follow-through. And the miners today, daily bounce underway. Anything under 32.92 on GDX is a daily lower high. Watch that bounce retracement size. If you bounce 50% plus, you can form the higher low. If you don't, you favor the potential downtrend. Oil still all bulls, four hour uptrend. We'll look for a daily higher low and EMA 12 support. And natural gas trying for the daily higher low, still a potential weekly bull flag and a potential daily bull flag. Need to see these bulls regain control of the short term time frames. It's a choppy mess on the hourly time frame the last two days. So really want to, bulls really want to hold daily EMA 12 to keep that a bull flag. Wells Fargo announced, just seeing this news in the chat room, Wells Fargo announced a $30 billion buyback. That's why the financial sector is going up here. Makes sense. All right. That's where we stand overall. Again, cannot stress enough, the most important factor for the start of August, because we're heading into the end of July here, is does the NASDAQ do individual names confirm daily downtrends? Again, I talk about the character of the chart. It's just a simple guide, daily uptrends for three months. Nothing changes if that keeps happening. If we confirm a daily downtrend, we will say, hey, this is different for the first time in three months. 
the summer euphoria is fading and shifting and we'll be paying attention to the downside opportunity. So let's see if the Bears can prove something to us. FOMC reaction again, bulls, or I should say the market is anticipating a 25 basis point hike. It's going to be Powell's comments during the press conference. If we get the 25 basis points, it'll be the comments that lead to the volatility at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. I'm also traveling tomorrow, which generally means extra volatility in markets. Appreciate you watching. Do good things, and we will see you soon.